Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a review that you've all been waiting for. I promise you, it's pianist Marc Andre Amelin's recording of William Bolcom's Complete Rags for Piano. Ooh, this was a good one. My goodness. Now, do I really have to recommend this? I mean, do I? We all know that just about anything that Marc-Andre Hamelin does is going to be fabulous. And it is. I mean, it goes without saying just about. And I was thinking as I was listening to this, actually, you know, how lucky we are when it comes to piano repertoire and the investigation of unusual stuff that we don't normally find. Although, to be honest, the Bolcom rags have been recorded numerous times, not complete like this, but, you know, selections from them because there are, let's see, how many of them are there here? Let's see, 13 plus 14, 27, plus a couple suites. So there's like 30 some odd of them. But, you know, one of the things that is marvelous about being a single person, as Marc-Andre Hamelin is, is that you can do all kinds of interesting stuff and do it fabulously, and it's going to be great, you know, because if you're a great artist and you have curiosity and, and intelligence and, and technique, that's, that's all you need. Whereas when it comes to the orchestral repertoire, so often, and I know that you'll agree with me in this, you know, we find that, that we get interesting repertoire with sort of second tierish orchestras and second or third tierish conductors. As often as not, it's very difficult when you're dealing with unusual orchestral repertoire to get the best, the absolute best you can get because the major orchestras, the big ones, don't want to waste the time and money, or they just don't care, and their conductors don't care, and it, it's a lot of work. And I'm not saying this was not a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but a lot of work for one person is very different than a lot of work for a giant agglomeration of 100 people and, you know, the different people who have to learn it and whatnot. And so we're much better off when it comes to the instrumental repertoire, unusual instrumental repertoire and chamber music, for example, than we are when it comes to the orchestral repertoire in terms of absolute quality. And there is no absolute quality that is higher than Marc-Andre Amelin and Hyperion Records and, quite frankly, the repertoire, Bolcom's Rags, which are fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Now, Bolcom wrote these uh, mostly in the 1960s, but they span his entire career so far. Um, he's still fine, thank goodness. Um, the last one was written in 2015, in, 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 uh, dedicated to his wife, the soprano Joan Morris. Um, it's called Contentment. It celebrates their many, many years of felicitous domesticity. But the most important thing about these, aside from the fact that they're delightful to listen to, I mean, they really are. They're so much fun. And what do you, there, there's, there's, well, let, let me just, I mean, they have cool titles. I mean, one of them is dedicated to Yubi Blake, called Yubi's Lucky Day, who Bolcom knew quite well and was friendly with. There's the Brooklyn Dodge. There's, there's California Porcupine Rag. And there's, there's the Incinerator Rag. It's like one word. Fields of Flowers, and Three Ghost Rags, which are fascinating. It's a little suite of three rags. There's the Garden of Eden, which is another little suite of four rags, and they are really fun. Some of them use, you know, advanced performance techniques, I wouldn't call it, you know, of the of the George Crumb or John Cage variety, um, but you do knock on the piano and bang and huff and do a few other things like that. But like I was trying to say before I just got sidetracked, the important thing about these is that they, they celebrate a, a uniquely American medium or form, the rag. And, you know, ragtime is, is, we love it. I mean, Bolcom was heavily involved in the revival of the music of Scott Joplin for example. I mean, he knows his ragtime. But the point is, the point is that this is, this is as American and legitimate and wonderful a medium in which to work as, for example, the Chopin mazurkas. 
or one of those sort of nationalistic dance piano gem type type things. That's what these are. And, and, and as usual with uh, American classical culture, nobody cares and nobody respects it. And we don't celebrate it in anything like the degree that we should. I mean, when Joplin became popular, really popular, you know, after the, the movie The Sting and all of that stuff and, and you know, Gunter Schuller's orchestrations of Tremonisha and his, his, you know, other rag things for his own ensemble, it, it, was, it was almost more a popular music phenomenon than a classical music phenomenon. It was crossover. And that's horrible. It was crossover for purely racist reasons, because Joplin was African American and it was not considered, you know, I don't know, snotty enough that were, or pure enough. I don't know what the answer is, that, that people who wrote music, that black people who wrote this kind of music were serious composers who were worthy of being, you know, admitted to the pantheon of great Western composers. I'm not sure it's even a, 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 a racist white black thing in terms of color as much as it is in terms of class. It was about, it was about, you know, elitism. I mean, th that's what it is. It's that kind of snobbery. And I'm sure there was a racist tinge to it as well. But we've never really celebrated our own musical culture, um, especially if our own musical culture came from groups that the, the establishment does not want to consider part of our own, which I just think is it's a crime. It makes me want to cry just thinking about it. Well, Balcom and some of his friends um, were, cons were thinking about just that in the 1960s. They wanted to celebrate this actually, this is true American original medium, and he did more than any other composer of his time, more than any other at least classical composer of his time. And the result is this fantastic series of rag compositions, which you're going to love. They have a huge variety of emotion, of expression, of, of, of shape, of, of color, of harmonic inventiveness. They're just, they're just great. There's no reason in the world not to celebrate this release. It's brilliant. And Marc-Andre Hamelin is just the guy to do it. And I'm thrilled to recommend this to you. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.